he's gay. I don't know. Uh, my other flat member told me. Uh, not flat member. My uh, another person in the house told me that it's not that it, there's a problem. It's just uh, he apparently teaches children or teaches kids or pe pupils some reading stuff. I guess I don't know. He's not really a teacher. Uh, there's another one who's working, living with his girlfriend here, and he's working at the airport. And then there's who I like to call the the good spirit of the house, uh, the one who always complains about everyone. And I guess she will complain about me when uh, <laughs> I am not around. But you know every kind of gossip from her, so. Even by just talking with this one per I don't know. I just don't see this, this, this whole... Oh, and I don't know anyone in my flat. Like, at all. I, I haven't had any sort of contact with them, like... Uh. I mean, you can't even say, oh, there are like... Five guys living in this flat. Uh, this house or something like that. I don't... Oh, it's not raining anymore. I don't mind rain. Sometimes I even like it. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once when I was just nine or ten. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. But now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Yeah? How do you know? <coughs> the only monsters are us murderers, rapists, arsonists. That's kind of mood breaker. Maybe you're right. I will believe in them when I see one. With this fog approaching fast, you might be in luck, Miss Ashworth. Ooh -ooh. I'm so glad I'm not spending another night outside. I might be a big girl now, but there will always be a part of me that is frightened, I guess. Did you know they actually have a name for it? It's called homiclophobia. Fear of fog. We are living in crazy times, Mitzi. They have a phobia word for everything. Apparently... I don't even know if there was a site with a huge list of phobias. I don't even know if half of them are actually real. Like, uh, there's uh, Anglophobia, which I think is fear from people of, from England. And... I, but perhaps I'm not this this into the way to this phobia type. Um, I know like the, the big ones, arachnophobia, agoraphobia, and they all sort of make sense. I mean, spiders are fucking evil. <laughs> um, agoraphobia, sure. Uh, you, if you don't really like unknown places or something like this. Uh, but, oh no, Kikoski, <laughs> ah, he's from England, help me, doesn't make any sense in my opinion, I mean, I am highly doubt that this was just some random mishmash of Latin words with phobia, though apparently, and I think that's actually real, there are really people who have a fear of left extremities on their body like they, they really cut off the left arm because they are afraid of it I don't know how I think those five people in this world who actually have this won't watch my videos to tell me what the fuck is wrong is going on there but I don't know so yes it's not really that strange that there's a phobia against Fox hmm. So the big C, want to talk about it. That's something I would never do. To be quite honest. I'm fairly certain that if she want to talk about it, she would talk about it. Um, 
I just don't see something to talk about there. Like, okay, you have cancer. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's not like I don't care. Like, if she's feeling not unwell or something, I would, of course, say, okay, hey, can I help you with something like that? And I would listen if she wants to talk to me about that. But I doubt I would put my nose in there. Like, asking, oh, hey, so... I don't know. I don't know. So, the Big C want to talk about it? Well, to be honest, I didn't really want to tell you about it like that. I put you in a very difficult position, I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. This is the last and most important thing I must do before my time is up. It's fine. You seem all right. It's just... I find it hard to trust people these days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? Brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. Huh. <laughs> yep, they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names. Lymphoma, melanoma, myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Hmm, you might just be right about that, Mitzi. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah. And yet, she gets to be the prom queen before night ends, while I disappear down the back exit. How long? They said I had a year. But that was six months ago, so... Yeah. Not awfully long. Is there anything... They've tried. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my. Do you want to talk about something else? <laughs> you mentioned a boyfriend. Oh, I'm pretty sure she did happy. You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. His name is Jack. Jack Frost. He's dead. <laughs> okay, happy. Oh. <laughs> Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I guess so. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. I just... don't know where to start. <sighs> How did he die? <laughs> Let's get to the juicy part first. Uh, no. <sighs> Jack made those pictures on your wall. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films. But I never felt that way. And yet, you are scared of fog? Oh, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. They're beautiful. You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, honestly, there is a certain indescribable beauty in sadness. Just like there's beauty in the grey and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must love my apartment, then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. As much as I bitched about the character progressions of Farf, our main character, I have to admit uh, introducing her was kinda okay. Uh, at first it was like, okay, what the fuck is wrong with you and now we can't I got some answers to it, so I kind of feel more for her 
I just don't know what the fuck is wrong with our main character, like what really drove her off. Of course, there's this mention about Eric and stuff like that, so I guess a unlucky relationship, I don't know. I just don't... I didn't really like this, this, this dialogue with the shrink, like, okay, I can choose a background story for my character, even though I know nothing about her at all. Yeah. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like forever. We grew up on the same street. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. Perfect match. I always knew he was the guy for me and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely crazy about me. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really grateful for in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. Some people go through a lifetime without knowing how it feels. I guess I've been very lucky. But all luck runs out sometimes. And I'm not talking too much during the dialogues because some people will most likely bitch about it. Like, mm, I can't really hear the dialogue. So I'm kind of quiet. It's not that uh, this is like, oh, this is too close to comfort or something like that. I just want to say that. I don't really like this just click, uh, just making a cutscene. It doesn't, if the... If it doesn't matter in what order I'm asking these questions, just don't make How me did he take the news about your cancer? Everything. He thought I was joking at first. He laughed. And he got really angry. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. It was awful. He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. I felt trapped in this strange place when nothing that happened around me seemed real. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack, and it was destroying him as well. He changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about, even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. How did he die? How did Jack die? He was so distant in the last few weeks before... before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly. But it eventually found him. Or rather, he found him. There are those forums online, you know, about all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions, everything really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. There's a guy there, calls himself the Eye of Adam. He's a fucking god on that forum. It's like a failed suicide club. People mostly try to help each other and offer support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. But the Eye of Adam is an advocate of death. He dwells on human weakness. His job is to plant an idea. To give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it. Once and for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. 
It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved. All thanks to the eye of Adam, who created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals, which combined together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a couple of minutes. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course, but he just wouldn't give up. He reasoned with me, then he begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance, but it was downright tacky and just wrong. Finally, he said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for hours, thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I loved most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that maybe he was right and I should do it. But I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. But right there in my bedroom, before I even left, I already knew it was. When I arrived at our special place. It was already bright. We used to go there in the past. Drink wine, sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd, sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old parking lot. But to us there was. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day I've never gone there again. Ah, okay. We we can play again. Wait. I guess I just have to find Jack. You know you can do stuff like that in a cutscene. That's awfully nice of him, to be quite honest. Like, warning people out of that. There were signs on the car windows. That's, that does come off as quite sarcastic. How strong is that gas? Let's not talk about I'm that. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I think I, I understand. Think now I understand. He loved you so much, he couldn't bear the thought of living without you. And that guy, the Eye of Adam. I'm not surprised you want to find him. I know I would. I'm not sure if I should believe that you only want to talk to him. But hey, that's none of my business. I wouldn't know what I'd do if this happened to me. Good to know, but I really just want to talk. I want to face Jack's killer and tell him what he's done to me. You know, the funny part is actually told me where he lives. He wants to meet me. Would you believe that? How come? Well, this kind of thing he does is called trolling on the internet. It's usually a form of extreme bullying, psychological cruelty. Those who are clever enough say, don't feed the troll. Don't talk to them. It, it only makes it worse if you show any interest in them at all. And I have Adam is no exception. He craves attention. He's a hungry troll who wants to devour as many hearts as he can get a hold of. I emailed him and told him I was a massive fan who loves his work. He wouldn't believe me at first. But trolls are always hungry. And I was prepared to serve him a meal fit for a king. What do you mean? I fed him so much bullshit that he really believed I'm a suicide preacher just like him. Great. 
I wish he'd given you his door number, though. It's all a part of some sick game he's playing. Sooner or later.